Now that you know what increasing returns to scale is, we want to investigate why is there an increasing returns to scale. Now this is due to something called economies of scale. Economies of scale happens when increasing the scale of production leads to a lower cost per unit of output. But why? Now here are some reasons. There is firstly specialization and division of labor. Now in large scale plants, workers can do simpler, more repetitive jobs because with specialization and division, you know, less training is needed. Workers can become highly efficient in their own jobs, especially in long production chains. This is what Henry Ford did. There's less time in workers switching from one operation to another and supervision is easier. And managers, workers can be employed to have specific skills in specific areas. There is also indivisibilities. You know, some inputs are of a minimum size. They're indivisible. For example, machinery. You know, if you're a small-scale farmer, you cannot make full use of a large combined harvester. You've got to be of a minimum size to use it. Um, and the th second thing is, you know, when you have indivisibilities, it's made worse when you have a production process and you need several different machines. For example, if there are two types of machines, one that produces something at eight, six units a day and the other that packages at four units a day, you need to produce a minimum of 12 units a day involving two production machines and three packaging machines. And unless you are a large firm, who has such a large customer base, you will not need the entire 12 units. And then there's also the container principle. So any capital equipment that is used to contain something, for example, blast furnaces, oil tankers, or pipes, and vats, and so on, tends to cost less per unit of output the larger its size. The reason has got to do with the relationship between volume and surface area. You see, a container's cost depends largely on the materials used to build it and hence the surface area. So its output depends largely however, on its volume. So large containers have a bigger volume relative to surface area than the smaller containers. For example, if you have a container right now, it is 1 meters by 1 meter by 1 meter, it has a surface area of 6 square meters because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One side is 1 cubic meter, sorry, one side is 1 square meter and the surface area is 6 square meters. Um, the volume is, called, of course, 1 cubic meter. Now, if you double each side to 2 meters, the volume will be 8 cubic meters, 2 times 2 times 2. But the surface area will be 24. So there is a, uh, because there is uh, six surfaces with four square meters each, so there's an eight fold increase in capacity, while uh, there's only a four fold increase in the container surface area. There's only a, a, around a four fold increase in cost. Now there's also byproducts. With a production scale, uh, on a large scale, there may be sufficient waste products to enable producers to make some byproducts. For example, oil cracking company might also own certain plastic companies because plastics are usually the byproduct in fractional distillation and save money. Uh, there are also organizational economies. With a large firm, individual plants can specialize in certain functions. There can also be centralized administration of the firm, so the finance department is lumped together. So often after a merger between two firms, savings can be made by you know, rationalizing their activities in this way. So when you borrow money as a large firm, you might also be able to get lower interest rates as well. So all these things contributes to increasing returns to scale.